Allow me to introduce you to my Mercedes Sprinter exhaust, but more importantly, this end of the exhaust. This is my DPF filter, and according to my computer, it's blocked. So today, I'm going to be unblocking my DPF filter. Right, now I've separated it. We don't need this bit, so we'll put this to one side, or down here on the floor where I'm about to trip over it later. Now you're probably wondering why have I decided to take the DPF off the van and clean it off van. When there are so many videos online showing you to squirt stuff into the DPF via either one of these tubes or the heat sensor. Some people take this off, squirt some special stuff in and then flush the DPF out like that. This method can be effective, I'm pretty sure, but I think of it like this. The gases and the soot flow this way through the filter. So surely it'd be better to flush it out in the reverse direction, that way cleaning it really well. After all, for me, it doesn't make sense that you can clean a filter in the direction of the flow that it, of the contaminants that it is actually filtering. Let me use my little hoover here to demonstrate what I mean. So inside my hoover, we have a filter. As you can see, it is quite grotty on that side. On the inside, it's relatively clean. So imagine trying to clean this filter by pushing all of this stuff through the filter. It's simply not gonna clean it properly. However, if you force air through this way, like that, then all the contaminants that the filter has caught are going to be released and it's going to clean the filter a lot better than trying to force the contaminants through the filter. So that's why I've chose to clean the DPF off of the van rather than using a DPS flushing agent which literally forces everything through the filter, I'm going to clean it by back flushing it that way, hopefully, getting everything out of it. Right, with that said and done, let me shine a torch down here to show you the difference between this end and that end. There you go, you can see it's white down in there, shiny white, whereas the other side is absolutely filthy black. Look at that. So there you are, that's why I'm going to back flush my DPF with DPF cleaner. And the DPF cleaner I'm going to be using today is Wayne's Off-Car DPF Cleaner. I've done quite a bit of research online and a lot of people highly recommend this. So that's why I'm going to be using that. And it's relatively cheap as well, it's less than 30 quid. Let's hope it works. Now the idea is to pour this DPF cleaner into the DPF this way up. So it's going in the clean end and all the crap should come out the dirty end. But what I want to do is let it soak for a good couple of hours. So, just so happens this water bottle fits nice and snug up inside there. So I'm going to block this end up, block up all these other holes in it, and then stand it upright, fill it up with DPF cleaner. Hopefully there's enough in there to fill this and every now and again I'm just going to agitate it a little bit, leave it for about eight hours and then pour it out and see what comes out. <laughs> I like that. Right, let's get a DPF cleaner and put it in my DPF. Well it's definitely reacting. <laughs> Yep, that's it. I'll see you in eight hours. See exactly what it's like later on. It's been soaking all night, so now I'm going to take it from here, take it outside, and flush it through with a hose pipe. I can't fit it back on my van because whilst I was taking the temperature sensor off of it, I actually snapped the end of the temperature sensor off. So I need to get a new temperature sensor now. 
So I won't be reassembling this today because today is Sunday and unfortunately Mercedes are closed on a Sunday so I need to wait till tomorrow to get a new sensor before I can reassemble it. So without further ado, let's get it outside and flush it through. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is nasty. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put the hose pipe in the top and then yeah, let it flush through. Jeez, look at the blackness coming out of that. Look at that. That's definitely done something because look at the soot coming out of there. I see a guy doing this on YouTube, he was jet washing out a truck DPF um, to prove you don't need DPF cleaner, that's why I thought I'd have a go at doing this. Look at this, pretty astonishing how much is coming out. And I'm not poking the nozzle right down onto the actual DPF filter because that could actually damage it so I'm only holding it about here and then swishling it around swishling it <laughs> anyway watch what comes out So all that's left for me to do now is wait for this to dry out, repair the damage I've done by snapping off the DPF heat sensor. Once I've done that, I can fit this DPF back to my Mercedes Sprinter and I'll let you know how it gets on. Now before I cleaned out my DPF, I removed the heat sensor from here. Unfortunately, the heat sensor snapped as I was undoing it. As you can see, it completely snapped off because the threaded part that's supposed to protrude from my DPF snapped as I was undoing it. So as I was undoing it, because this part snapped off of there, it also destroyed the internal part of the heat sensor as well. I'm kind of thinking I should have just left it in place and risked it rather than risk breaking it. But there you go, it's snapped anyway. So I've ordered a new heat sensor. Before that heat sensor arrives, I need to repair this. And that's why I drilled a hole through the middle of this 14mm bolt. I'm hoping, I'm kind of guessing that this is a 14mm threaded part. So when the new heat sensor comes, this part will slide down inside. The top part will screw in. And with that being welded there, the heat sensor will be back in place. But here's the challenge. The challenge it's, isn't drilling a hole through this bolt. It's actually welding this into place and getting it in the right place. So what I've done, I've taken this 8mm bolt, tapped the hole, so this 8mm bolt now screws into the hole. So I can now place this 8mm bolt through the middle of my 14mm bolt, and screw it down in place, allowing me to weld it precisely and exactly where I need it to be. Right, and the challenge with this is getting the welder past all these gubbins. If I can't, then I'm going to simply take this bolt, put it on the side here, 
and then weld it here, hoping that the cable will be long enough to allow me, I guess if I position it like that, it's not going to be that much difference. Maybe I'll just do that anyway, but this is a curved surface, so welding a flat bolt to this curved surface could be a bit challenging in itself. That's why this washer's welded on here, making it a nice flat surface to weld onto. But anyway, that said, let's give it a go, see if we can weld this in place. If not, then we'll just have to go on the side. Well, it sure ain't pretty, but it's on now. That's the main thing. Um, just need to clean it up a little bit. Doesn't matter, it's only an exhaust. Right, so all I've got to do now is hope and pray that the thread on this 14mm bolt is the right thread pitch for the sensor. If not, we'll have to cut a new thread in this bolt. The main thing is I've got something there to work with. Right, let's hope that new sensor turns up within the next couple of days. I'll be right back.